Welcome to Nearing Nirvana, bringing you another episode of Long Story Short. Uh, we got a full table today, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and pass it off to Long Short. Let's get it started. Hey. Well, first of all, thank you, uh, everyone who watched uh, our show last week. Um, we got 500 plus views, I think well more than we were expecting. So thank you very much. If you tuned in, if you like it, you know, let your friends know about it. Um, so we're going to talk about some uh, foil comics tonight, right? We like to keep this light. Um, normal disclaimers apply. This is not meant to be a spec show. We're just here to, to riff on some cool comics. Um, don't go around out and buy these. You'll see right away that some of these are, in, in many cases, super common. Um, others, you know, super scarce. But this is not um, an invitation for you to go spend crazy money on on these books. We're just here to talk about some some fun comic books so oh, well, one more thing before we get started uh i want to thank our sponsors bird city comics make sure you uh go to their website and also the uh use the code nirvana to get i think it's like what is it a 15 percent discount or is it 10 it'll say in the in the description below uh but also uh cover price uh, make sure you use the code uh nirvana 14 and you get the 30 days for a dollar 99 for uh the unlimited access yeah great resource cover price and matt devoe is a friend um a friend of, of, of many of us on the show tonight and he has actually um uh, helped with some of the books on this list so uh, matt if you're watching thank you and uh and yeah definitely check out uh cover price a great great resource all right uh, i guess we'll jump right into it all right so um so this is a Rio trade paperback. Um, from everything that I could find, this is the first comic book that ever had um, any foil um, on it, right? So it was in the trade dress there. Uh, it was published by Comico back in 1987. So um, um, this book is actually not that expensive. I think you can find it out there for 20 or 35 bucks. I don't think it's super collectible. I thought it was interesting just if, if we're going to talk about foil comics Let's go through a little bit of history. And as far as I could find, this is the first one. How? The hell, how? How? How'd you find that? <laughs> <laughs> I was just I was just researching some some stuff. It'd come up in a couple of different places as is being referenced as the first foil comic. Nineteen eighty-seven. You okay? You you'd uh, figured it'd be I don't know a, a lot sooner than that, but eighty-seven. Okay. So it's funny as I was researching this process of like foil embossing stuff it's like date ba dates back to like the 1800s believe it or not that's but, wild um, it, so, do you know what the rio is about it gives me some like kind of like pulpy crime detective vibes from the from the cover yeah, I, I couldn't tell for that it was more western to be honest in nature mm -hmm. I, I couldn't I, I have not read it i don't have this <laughs> um i just thought it would be fun to mention but yeah I, if anybody's cool. read it please let us know All right, moving along. Um, uh, here's a book that um, defined the 90s in many ways. This is the first chromium cover. So chromium is kind of like uh, mm. extra foil. Mm. Um, um, but mm. uh, yeah, a super a super common book, a very popular book mm. from 90s, like Peak <laughs> Valiant. Um, you know, these can be found you know fairly easily in the wild. But just something to point out that this was the first time this technique of, of chromium was ever used was on was on this particular comic book, and um, and and. Uh, you know, this was the period, the point in, in the hobby where people, you know, the gimmick covers went absolutely crazy. Uh, and uh, yeah, this was the first time this this, te this technique was used. Um, but uh, like once again, not nothing particularly noteworthy, but just a, uh, a cool book. This book actually did a little something when uh, the Bloodshot movie came out. You had a little spike in this book, but it, it's fairly it's fairly common. Yeah, I remember paying uh, two fifty for this book like a few years ago, like a dummy. <laughs> And uh, back in the day, um, I had the card because uh, Valiant, they, they, they released trading cards. And I had the Chromium card of that image right there. And I had it, some, I had it uh, between two plastic blocks because I thought this thing was going to be <laughs> like, uh, Mantle. It was going to be the next Mickey Mantle rookie. Didn't quite play out that way. But, uh, still but fine, still fine memory. I'm sure it could, you know, fetch a few dollars if it was a PSA 10, right? <laughs> but speaking of this book, 
I am going to be giving it away tonight, along with the Something is Killing the Children foil. Oh, so fun. make sure you are active in the chat because it is already started. It is gathering names right now. So all you have to do is just participate in chat. Continental United States only. <laughs> and I'll put <laughs> an I guess, uh, Dumb question. Um, and, and yeah, what's the difference between foil and chromium? Does anyone know? It's I, not, I, it's like um, the chromium is like it's it seems it, to be a little bit more layered. It's, it's, like, it's the texture it. of uh, yeah. the 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 alloy. Yeah, I mean, is chromium a real thing? Like Did that, that sound like it like was like correct? Digging? Because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, do people go digging for chromium? Like, is there a, like a whole chromium <laughs> industry? No, <laughs> no. Oh, oh, I, I'll tell you what. Um, didn't. Shit, shucks. Um, Exo Man of War Zero. Yeah, it was, there's a ton of them. Yeah, it's full chromium wrap around. I mean, yeah, because yeah, there's a lot like, of them. Cause, uh, okay, because there's like the texture, but then it's like you have the overlay of uh, it's like the the it's like that smooth overlay. Just to kind of give it the feel. Yeah, I, I think of, it's the way that the, the that the image I mean, whatever they're doing. I mean, and we this need technique to do is still used on sports cars, right? Sorry, I didn't <laughs> mean, chrome sports cars right. now, but it's the chromium. Yeah. It's the same. It's the same sort of, yeah, the way that the colors and the layering is done. I don't have. Maybe we should have done a little bit more research on that before. Yeah. We, uh, well, next we family got... vacation, uh, we're going to take a tour of a chromium factory, and I'll. I'll, I'll <laughs> <laughs> All right. So first chromium. So this was the first prism cover. Oh man, uh, look at that. Right. We oh, all wow. remember this one. Um, oh, definitely. Uh, sorry, that that should be said 2000, <laughs> 1992 under there, not two thousand two. Um, but yeah, classic uh, Jim Lee cover. First time there, there was there was a couple of books that came out with this technique in very. Um, uh, close order, but by all accounts, this was the first time this technique was used. And if you've ever seen this book, it's quite eye-catching. Uh, it's just really quite cool. But another book that was printed to the moon and back again. Um, but uh, first time the prism technique um, uh, was used. And the prism is, is foil, but, you know, it reflects, refracts in the light. Um, um, and there's a bunch of circles that, uh, that make the pattern together. So, like, when you see it in hand, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. God, I remember seeing. I remember this on the stands. Oh, I, th like this! Wow, this brings back a lot of memories. This was a mu this was a must have, right? I mean, oh, when, when yeah, this oh hell out. yeah, for sure. And yeah, it's funny, cool. um, the newsstand is just doesn't have any of that foil. It's just white. It's just yeah, a white background. White. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the, the, the newsstand. It. And, I, uh, I, I picked up so you could only get this like yeah. like specifically if it was a direct edition it's the only one with prism right like okay right but but here's a uh here's a prism um newsstand right yep yeah, yeah. The, 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 those hulks were the um were big books in, the, in their own rights yeah i thought i had um i i did I picked up a collection with a bunch of these but i also have the wildcat too like 20 copies of that that We'll never yeah, I mean, they, they, listen to anybody watching it. If you're not familiar with these books, they're super common. <laughs> like, don't don't go out there and spend any real money on any of the stuff, please. The, 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 you can find them fairly easily. Um, but uh, next, we've got um, as far as I could tell, and this one was a little harder to pinpoint. I believe this was the first metal cover, and a bunch came out at the same time. A lot of people think Valiant got the first one, but I believe this beat Valiant to the punch by like a month or two. Um, there's only 10 of these when it came out. So this is Lady oh, Death, wow. and Holy Ruin, uh, number one, um, first metal cover, I believe. If, if I'm wrong, someone please correct me. Uh, this was only limited to 10. I couldn't find any evidence of this thing selling anywhere. With only 10 made, people bought them, and they're still sitting in their collections. I'm, I'm sure of it. But um, I was at that ECC. I didn't know that. Dang it. <laughs> there was only 10 of them. Yeah. I mean, Alleg allegedly. How is yeah. something just limited to ten? That's just like. Listen, I think making a metal cover at that point was probably they didn't know, right? I mean, I mean, some of these metal covers that are coming out now are only to twenty-five or fifty. I mean, they don't have a lot of these things don't have huge print runs. So now is it just because they're cover. so like difficult to make, or it's just like the overhead is too high that they would only print like, or they would only make like ten to twenty-five? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm sure the upfront cost on them is relatively high. So who the hell knows how many are going to buy them? And they've got to sell them for something quite hefty, I would imagine, to justify mm -hmm. making mm -hmm. them. So if you've never sold a metal cover before, you're probably not going to crank out 100 of them, right? Let, let, good, let, let, let's run 10, see how they go, and we'll, we'll go from there. So, right. so that's real metal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay. And then that's the, and that's then the thing that, now. Like people are, are wanting their posters uh, embossed on foil. And I think there's some like people on TikTok that they have a business where they just take posters and they superimpose it on on foil, like like heat it onto onto the to the metal plates. So it's a pretty cool process. So I can imagine it's pretty pricey too. Yeah, I was gonna say I can only imagine that there's only a handful of printers that actually can produce like metal covers. Uh, yeah, I mean I've got a few. I've I've got a few ones. I, I didn't include them in in this but they're they're, they're neat they're, they're obviously heavy um but mm -hmm. they're usually most of the time I, I think the highest print runs i see on them are like maybe a hundred and, and that would be high like 50 25 and they're printing on metals or are, are, are usually what you see and then they're and they're a hundred bucks or something or 75 bucks i mean they're not cheap yeah um bird city just did a metal cover for um an ivan tau um book the um I'm going blank on it. It's it, it looks really cool. It's on it's on their uh, it's on their website, but then I think it was limited to fifty or something like that. So. Hey, do you think somebody got stabbed in the parking lot of the con <laughs> for one of those? What do you think? <laughs> They're sharp as hell, man. You could fuck somebody up with one of these things if you're not careful. I don't know. It's Seattle though, so <laughs> anyway. <might> so <laughs> yeah. We just went through a little history. Is a metal cover foil? Not really, but it's sort of like it feels like the evolution of the foil cover so now we're just going to jump into some to some books just talk about them so i'd say one of the classic if not the classic foil cover of the 90s is the gold gambit um uh variant uh this book fetches a hefty premium um and you know there are, there are quite a few of them on the census 521 total so that's not just a 9 8 just 521 graded so not what not a super rare book but a super sought after book you know this book sells quite well sells well raw we saw a 9.8 go for almost a grand uh back in april um so uh, a classic 90s uh x-men uh foil uh comic that's so wild i've seen them constantly in like the back issue bins of like my comic shops in chicago for super cheap like the i gold had no ones idea. really because they but... mean because the black one the black one is also foil embossed but it's mm -hmm. just like the i think it's the black portion of of his name is like in silver or gold or something yeah, I've seen um, some of the gold. I had no idea it was like, you know, heating up or anything like that. Yeah, this, 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 yeah the fans seem to love this one. Mm -hmm. Carter, you must have a couple of these now. Yeah, you know what? Um, yeah, and this is definitely one of uh, one of the early like Marvel outright variants, right? Yes. Like yeah. straight out yeah but I, I i i don't remember like what the deal of, like how how they how they restricted it i don't i couldn't uh -huh. find a major ratio I, I forget what we, they were doing a handful of these at the time but i i forget the exact um you know yeah. the way that they limited this one yeah you know i finally got one a few years ago i was just like that was it was like a it was like a uh a weight being lifted off my back <laughs> find, find one i mean it was the 90s so there's probably not a, an exact ratio to it, right? Yeah. No, this, I mean, I this book doing it like a one percent. Yeah. No, this book is notorious. Uh, just trying to find it in high grade, it's it's pretty damn difficult. Like, like, so it picks up ticks. Like you can see that book right there with the mm -hmm. the spine yeah. ticks. I mean, it just it's notorious for like that's why it's so tough getting it in a nine eight man. Yeah, there's 163 night. That's what that 163. So they're, you know, they're not, they're not the overwhelming like uh, grade that you see yeah. like, a lot of modern moderns, right? Most of them are nine eights, but, um, but yeah, just a, a classic '90s foil cover. All right, De uh, degenerate saying that he thinks it's a it's equivalent to a one in twenty five, but he's not okay. quite I mean, sure. That, that might, yeah, that could absolutely be the case. I I I I, I quite generally don't know, but didn't doesn't sound too far off i do like the uh regular edition uh newsstand i like yeah mm -hmm. 
that regular edition is hard and high grade anyway. That black mm-hmm. cover, that cardstock cover, yep. picks up uh, text like nobody's business. I mean, that's <laughs> a real tough one in high grade. Real, real tough. All right. So, speaking of newsstands and '90s foil covers, I would say like a fun. And obviously, not all of these on this picture are newsstands; are just examples of '90s foil covers. You know, when I'm out at cons or I'm digging, right? I always look for these uh, in newsstand because, um, you know, the, the, the super heavy, heavy print runs from the '90s were all being driven by the comic shops, right? So the the newsstands are 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 far more rare, and you know, they they uh, and for whatever reason, particularly for these kinds of books, they feel feel like a lot harder to find. So there's countless countless um of these out there um you know marvel dc image everybody was doing them non-stop um so something i always keep a lookout when i'm digging if i find these yeah there you go steve yeah, if i more, find more. i swear i didn't plan this i've had this not <laughs> playing here uh from a collection forever and uh yeah i didn't plan this but yeah there you go an example yeah i always look for those like that, that oh, is, there's, there's, a, there's a few more. different iron man there's a bunch of thors i mean it, yeah, plenty of fantastic fours. Uh, Punisher, is oh, that Punisher? That, that, that Punisher on, looks Steve? so good. Steve, uh, are those the newsstands that's on the back on that book? No, that, those, those, oh, those, is that on the back? I don't it's know. It's on the back. They're tough. They're they're tough in newsstands. Those Punishers, particularly in like in nine eight. No, they're no no newsstand there. Yeah, I feel like there's so few and far between for that book for some reason. Yeah, I sold I sold one. Uh, I I sold one and it still was in the the poly bag. And it was a new stand. I saw one on whatnot. I shouldn't have. But... Oh, that was last night, wasn't it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> this was a while back. Um, but yeah, it's something to keep it on. Here is a, um, yeah, the next one. So, so th- this is a 90s foil cover that's actually quite sought after. Uh, Marvel uh, number one. This was um, a little racy for Marvel at the time, this entire series but um but this book sells pretty well even even raw it can comfortably go for over fifty dollars um to the last sale we saw in 9 8 was 229 that was by no means the high for this book um, um but they did three cover a's this one is the one that gets the most attention um but um but a but a marvel um foil cover um that uh, uh that, that people find quite collectible it seems Man, I've been working on this run, and I still can't. But I'm being I'm being a little cheapo about it, like trying to pick up all the issues. So yeah, it's, a, it's some of these books in this run are real tough. I mean, and they're all a little edgy, like this for Marvel. And um, um, yeah, but this one this this one seems to be one of the favorites. I think issue number six is also highly sought after, and can command a pretty good premium. But uh, um, and then awesome Greg Corn cover too, because. What Bird City's going to uh, San Diego and uh, helping out Greg Horn's table? Yeah, yeah, they've done they've done some books with him in the past that have been really cool. So yeah, this is a classic uh, Greg Horn for sure. Must be All pretty right, hot well, outside, you know, for the bikini. <laughs> <laughs> I like when nope. the foil is moved uh, like on the for like the the name, and it's not like foil everywhere. This one is like, this cover. It's hard to tell on that cover. That 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 cover is foil. If you've seen it, the whole thing is foil. So it's not just the the, the oh, trade dress. Okay. That cover cover is foil. You know, top to bottom, front to back. So, oh, uh, that that it definitely doesn't look like that in the picture. That's actually really cool, though. Yeah, it, it, it's it's tough to tell. But if you've seen that one, yeah, it it, it sort like of shimmers. Total foil. Yeah. There we go. Aaron's going to show off a little bit here for a minute. That's so pretty. Yeah. So. So, you know, what we're seeing a lot, and we're going to talk some of these books, is that, you know, um, these exclusives from conventions are, are being done in foil. They're being, they're, they're limited. And they're a lot, a lot of them are reprinting, you know, really popular books. This thing was a home run right out of the gate. Yeah. I think these two were like the foil covers to get at Megacon. Yeah. A hundred percent. They, they both were, were hugely sought after. I mean, if you think about this for a second, I mean, this was going for two or three hundred bucks raw right out of the gate, like immediately after, if I'm not mistaken. I think uh, it set a record high of like seven hundred. Raw, wow. Yeah, um, which was absolutely that's insane. Crazy. Um, but um, but a beautiful McFarland cover. Last so is, sales, is um, McFarland gonna sign that? I don't know. 
when's the last time he's done a signing either? It's like if you don't if if you don't get if an artist doesn't get repaid for um, reused art, then they don't sign. They'll never sign it. So yeah. Oh, so, I mean, aren't like you aren't you paying thing. him to get to sign it? You know what I'm saying? Aren't you giving him money I, to sign I, it? I think off of how many principle. times you want to get paid, bro? Yeah, I guess off of principle, but I get it. But like, let me give you some money just and write your damn name on the book. Dude. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, because he already has a list of books that he won't sign. So, oh, yeah, we'll find out if this one makes the list. Uh, what, what I do love about this book is that. There was a there was a mistake in the drawing on the first one that I guess bugged him like crazy. So if you see the yellow moon in the background, at like the ten o'clock point on the clock, there's a little piece of yellow in the cape there. That that was not yellow on the original, and I guess it right. drove him crazy for years every time he saw the book. And they fixed it on on this foil here, but that little yellow was missing. It was just red there, and um, um, you know he. Uh, uh, they, they 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 fixed it for for this one. You know the the the, the original um, of this book in nine eight sells for crazy prices, crazy prices. I'm shocked at what this book sells for nine eight. The original, uh, unbelievable. But uh, yeah, super popular convention foil. We're going to talk about a few uh, convention foil um, books here um, because it, it seems like you know they, they they tend to do quite well and they, they tend to do all right. Um, you know in the aftermarket. Um, so. I think I've got another one right on the back end of this one. Yeah, so Supergirl 19. We talked about this book. This is by Art Germ on, a, on another show um, a while ago. Classic Art Germ cover. Maybe my favorite Supergirl cover that he's done. Probably is. Um, uh, but this was a convention exclusive. Um, uh, there are uh, 34 nine eights, 80 on the census. Um, most of the books on the census are actually signed. So... Uh, have, finding an unsigned one is is uh, a little bit more challenging. Last nine eight went for just under two hundred bucks, um, but a beautiful book. If you've seen this book in person, um, it, it's stunning. You know what? I think I actually have one here. Hold on, <laughs> I have this somewhere. I don't know what I did with it. But um, but, these are but, some good looking foil covers. Like my only introduction to foil has been like nineties covers. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we, we touched on all that to start, but we were going down the rabbit hole as we generally do the further we get into the show. I don't know what I did with mine, but I do have this, and it, it's really it's really stunning. The foil on this looks really, really, really cool. Oh, Big Remo, I would have, I would consider the, what, Batman 423 more of a facsimile with a new cover, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think because, uh, like, printing, like, I would consider that like closer to like when it was actually published, right? Like to be yeah, an initial printer. Yeah, this one came out closer to the one it was actually published. There's another one on here that I think I read was printed at the same time, but they held them for the convention. Um, is that the? You want to go ahead and go to the next one? Then? Yeah, we can go to that. I think it's the next one. So the, yeah, this is Batman '92. So. I like Punchline. Uh, she's a cool character, and I loved this cover. But it was the original of this cover. the The cardstock was maybe the best selling book of the year for 2020. Um, it was yeah. it was massively ordered. Um, and then they came out with this foil edition, and uh, there are far fewer of these on the census than um, than the original cover A. Um, I think it's limited to 3,000. I called around, tried to figure this out, and 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 while they you couldn't get a straight answer. They said that generally these con this is for DC, um, the DC convention fandom, I think is what I call it. And they were saying they're generally limited to 3000. This was, this was from home. So this was during COVID. So nobody was there. You just had to order these. They sold out relatively quickly and, um, punchline stuff got submitted to CGC absolutely in droves. Um, mm -hmm. th th this one's still on the census is, is I think her her rarest of of the Batman ninety twos and there's a lot of them. There's a one in twenty five. There's a one per store. There's a couple. There's a cover A. There's a cover B. Um, but um, but yeah, I think this one. I like this one is pretty cool. And yeah, the foil just kind of makes it a little bit more collectible than than the the, the way overprinted. You so know. Uh, I did buy one of these, and actually I think I gave it to Laura for like her birthday a long time ago, and 
it was from that graphic tea company that prints comics also that's like at every convention uh, i forget yeah they were doing them for dc that's why i reached out to about the number mm -hmm. um yeah i think that's right aaron I, that was who i reached out to to try to get a sense of like how many mm -hmm. of these are there really i'm just I was just curious hey ben when when you're researching and you're calling people and asking about print runs do they say like are you a cop or <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. Like, it's who are you? Why stuff. do you want to know? <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, but this also is like with, with what happens with modern characters too, right? Where they stretch out their first appearance, and then this was already presented as this is going to be her first full appearance in a in a comic, even though what she had been in like two or three previous ones. Yeah, I mean, Hell Risen, Hell Risen Three is is what's considered her first full. But if you read that, I mean. I think it's debatable. She's in a number of panels, but really from the distance, there's one shot of her that's kind of close up. Yeah. She doesn't speak in it, uh, but the market has said that's her first appearance or whatever. Um, and it's and it's it is it was really an underordered book, so I, I get why that all the value is there. But you know, if you really think about a character emerging and like like a first full, if that term means anything, like this really is more of what a first full appearance would be, where she's throughout the book throughout the story she's kind of like just in that in that hella is it's just kind of playing like just just next to the joker a lot of it a lot of the times there's one frame where you can kind of see her a full frame picture of her but a lot of them are really small and from from a distance but i mean she's there she absolutely is but i i, I mean i don't see this first full this whole debate is kind of exhausting i'm not really a huge fan yeah of i wasn't trying to start it either no, but, so, uh, yeah yeah <laughs> But uh, but yes, I mean, if that term means anything, like she is throughout this book, start to finish, so it's a, it's a different kind of appearance. Her it's origin awesome. sucks, by the way. What's that? Her origin sucks. Yeah, that was a weird freaking story. Wasn't it? Right. <laughs> I'm like, I thought she was just some like uh, like cool assassin or some shit like that. Just a bored co-ed. Yeah, it. I agree. <laughs> well, you know, she's like a groupie. Okay. Like she like she's like just like worship the uh, the psychopath. You know. So yeah, they they fell down on that one a little bit, but uh, she's got a new series coming out. Um, they just announced that, so we'll see where where, where DC goes with the character. Um, who the hell knows? But this wasn't about meant to be pitching punchline, but yeah, just cool for another convention foil variant. Did we have one more on here? I forget if I had one more. Oh yeah, hmm. the, the, this this is kind of a big book. You know, this is this is a blend of a foil, a convention. And a form all kind of wrapped up in, in into one. Uh, so this is Lamole, the Lamole Con foil variant for Ultimate Fault number four. Um, this is rumored to be a thousand. I don't think that's accurate. I think I've read somewhere that it's closer to fifteen hundred. But everybody, everybody who's selling these says says it's a thousand. I think it's fifteen hundred. If 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 if, uh, if I'm correct on that. Um, but there aren't a ton on the census. Less than two hundred and fifty. Uh, but a really cool version of this book. And it does quite well. Like it, it was in '98. It was selling for as much as a thousand. Obviously, the whole market's come in. Wow. It's selling for less than that. I think it's going for closer to six hundred right now, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just a cool, a cool book, a modern classic. And uh, people love foreigns, right? Foreigns are really becoming um, more than just a niche. And uh, yeah, this book is, uh, you know, a lot of people chase it. Yeah, I'm still kicking myself for not buying this. <laughs> <laughs> So something is the something is coming to children number one. Um, uh, this is the Frizen um, foil variant. Um, you know this thing may have killed the uh, the the uh, the FOC um, of, of this book because everybody seemed to have wanted this one. But a really cool um, foil version of um, you know in many people's opinion one of the better covers for 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 for, um, for number one. Um, just Jenny Frizen at her best. Um, this book sells pretty well. Um, 300 plus bucks, which is down from its highs, way off its highs. I think it was over 500 bucks. Um, 255 on the census and just, uh, yeah, just a foil done well. Um, there's some embossing on this. It, if, if you've seen it in person, it really pops. Yeah, it, it does. It, it, it accentuates their hair nicely. The brown hair. Who had one of these? You had this, don't you? Yeah, okay. <laughs> So I have one of the nine eights. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Frizzing is amazing. Bags, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can you can see how how cool that looks there. Oh, that's awesome. 
Nice. Uh, yeah. And this was I forget who did this. This was this was a store who did this, right? Oh, Comics and Oddities. Yeah, uh Sanctum San- Sanatorium Comics and Oddities. Yeah. Yeah. And it was it was pretty limited, Aaron, right? If I remember correctly. What did they do they say what this was limited? I, oh, I'm thinking of the Department of Truth. The Department of Truth foils, which are not on this show, those things were, were, were limited to a lot more. Yeah. It was like seventy five. Yeah. For the I DOT. I forgot yeah, to, yeah. I forgot to chart that one out. Yeah, I yeah, I bought those also. Uh, but I need to send one to Joe for pressing. Um, but I know Sanctum or Comics and Oddities, they they also did the uh the Blood Splash one, the black and white uh of of, of this cover of the prison. Right. That yeah. yeah. Uh, also uh, also cool. Yeah, there, there's a lot we could have we could have covered on the show. There's so many damn foils out there, too many to talk about. And uh, you know, we're not gonna do a lot of themed versions of this show, but there was enough foils to talk about where we could uh, we could pull this together, but this isn't the uh this isn't the long term plan by any means. So um um uh, just just talking about some cool ones. All right. Uh keeping with the exclusives and this is early on in the uh, in the exclusive uh game um so this is gi joe america's elite uh, number one uh this is a silver foil exclusive by graham cracker comics um these were limited to 500 uh there's one nine eight on the census eight total copies so um, not a book that's been heavily graded um this will sell raw and be careful because there's two versions of it. There's one without the foil, and I think I've seen them both sell kind of in the same range, sort of seventy to a hundred dollars, roughly. Uh, but this foil one is is much more sought after, um, um, and uh, hard to get your hands on. I've got a couple of non-foil ones, and um, I love the cover, but that freaking graham crackers logo just, it's so it, stupid it, right that's my local comic shop too oh, <laughs> no so but like having that like is it like right there on the cover is awful that comic sans font on, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like is this so homage in the cap the captain america book yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, it looks like we got Uh-oh. a super chat. Wow. We got a super oh, chat. Thanks. So thank you. They call me Bruce. But so instead of dancing, I'm going to be playing guitar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Wade's World. Party time. Excellent. <laughs> I actually learned that, how to play that for, for this show. So. Um. Yeah, so the I couldn't find any graded sales of this book. Uh, there's not that many of them, obviously, out there. But um, yeah, a cool a cool foil variant, and and, and really a, a company that got into sort of doing exclusives very early on, um, and uh, yeah, kept it limited. So that's what people want, right? Limited print runs, rare books. That's that's really what the market wants in this space. So good stuff, man. All right. This was uh, this was one that Steve threw on right at the end. Steve, you want to uh, you want to talk about this one a little bit? Sure. Yeah, I, I remember uh, picking up one of the I think one of the last copies off Graham Cracker's website maybe three years ago. Uh, you know, realizing that it had an, it was one of the comics that had the invincible number one preview on it. So that's mainly. Uh, the attraction for a lot of people, although, of course, there's Masters of the Universe fans, right, uh, as well. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know what this is, was limited to. I, I want to say 500, um, but, uh, yeah, uh, just, uh, and I think they, if I remember correctly, they kept the that Graham Crackers logo off. Oh, okay. I see it now. It's below the number one there. So it's a little more discreet, which is nice. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I, I think I might have sold uh, two copies and, and now I don't have any. And Aww. I'm sad, but um, yeah. Did you sell one the big leg at least? I might have had him press it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I did check the census numbers on this. So that, that is 11.98 out of 15 total graded for this. 
Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that would imply that it's probably 500. I mean, if there's that few of them, <laughs> right. I would guess, but I mean, who knows, but. And yeah. I think like, um, like some of these other ones, um, I, I want to say there is a, a foil, but there's also a non-foil version. Oh yeah, and you did mention this to me in chat that there is an invincible preview of yep. issue number one in this. Yep. Yeah. All right, um, Mega Man number one from two thousand three, Mick Fong ho uh, holofoil uh, variant cover. Um, this is a really cool looking book if you can find it. Um, sells for for quite a bit. When I was talking with Matt Devoe. Um, I already had this book on on this list, but I talked to Matt about like, hey, what do you think? I know you like foils. This was the first book that he suggested. Hey, you got Mega Man number one on there. So, yeah, um, I was going to say before you even mentioned DeVoe, I'm like, yeah, he, he's a super Mega Man fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this, is, this is a super cool book. Uh, $250 was the last night we saw, wow. which was about a year ago. Um, so it's been a while since we've seen these only 16 of 23 in the census, you know, I don't know how this book was limited in, was it a ratio or how, how it was distributed, but it is tough to find a tough book to get your hands on. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, a really cool looking, a really cool looking book. And, um, and, you know, Mega Man, they're, they're definitely fans out there, um, right. Hardcore Mega Man fans. So, um, um, you know, you know, they'll certainly be seeking this one out, but. Um, uh, yeah, just, just another really tough, tougher to find, um, you know, sought after book. It's one of those ones. I found this book in the wild years ago for like 25 bucks and I bought it for my son cause he loved Mega Man and he kicked the shit out of it. Um, so, so, but, um, um, but I remember finding it for 25 bucks never having seen it before. And, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't pop up that often. It will sell raw cheap because I think a lot of people just don't know what it is really so um yeah just a cool book to maybe keep your eye open for um could be stuffed in some of these dealer long boxes in their in their you know five or ten dollar bins who knows so i did a quick look up one diamond and it, it was open order but um it it sold for twice the price so the cover okay. price was 5.95 for the holo foil and the, the regular cover was two ninety five. Okay, so it's I mean, you. I would think there'd still be a lot more of these if that's if that was the case. If it was open order, but yeah, but for for I guess what's considered a kid's title, and sometimes when it's like double cover, sometimes especially back then, I think retailers were pretty conservative. They're like, really, how many people are going to buy the you know the uh, the the holo foil for twice cover? Yeah, and I, I think that's fair. I mean, these kid these kids' titles weren't heavily ordered, generally. Although, um, although you know, when you think when they're making these, are they making these for the kids at that point, or are they making those for the you know the people who played the game when they were a kid, trying to target you know people as young yeah. adults? I, you know, I guess it's hard to to know, but uh, yeah, cool book, and that that's good to know, Steve. Open open order. It doesn't feel like they pop up nearly enough to be to be open order books, but. Um, Maybe they're out there. Aren't they yeah. doing some sort of production for Mega Man 2 coming out? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like I thought I, feel I heard. Like I heard something about that. They're like yeah. doing something. I, I, I'm not sure sure what, but that's that's a beautiful cover. I mean, I don't even like really like Mega Man, but I want that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is uh, this is Aaron's. Yeah. So. So I remember this book at one of the bigger cons I went to, um, Emerald City Comic Con in 2018. And uh, they had leftover copies from uh, New York City Comic Con. And they were just selling it at the Oni booth for, you know, for cover price, which I thought was kind of weird um, for, for just like four bucks, like whenever they scanned it. So it was a New York City Comic Con foil exclusive. Um, and then when I was searching it a little bit online, they had they were selling copies off the website for twenty bucks, which I thought was, was like, well, how's that? They're a huge disconnect from this, and so it just kind of threw me off. And um, this is probably like in the height of like when Rick and Morty was popular. 
uh, right when Pickle Rick was like released and stuff like that, especially in comics, because Vindicators had just come out at that same time period. Um, what else? Yeah, I mean, I mean, some of the Rick and Morty stuff, yeah, you know, people have gone crazy for. <laughs> I, I, I was completely unaware of this book, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's only yeah, 18 on the census, 17 of 18 or 98, so I guess it held up pretty well. But yeah. we haven't seen a 98 sell in several years. Yeah, and then I heard the rumor that uh, around that time period that it was limited to 500, but I don't know how accurate <laughs> that, that is or not. If that was just like some seller trying to like flip a bunch of books. Yeah, I, I listen. I don't think that's crazy though. I mean, an NYC foil exclusive at 500. I mean, that seems reasonable. To be honest with you. All right, so hmm. I don't know anything about this book, <laughs> uh, but I was doing some research about foil covers, and this thing came up, and I could not put it on the list. So this is the Muppet Show number one from 2009. Um, uh, this is a hollow foil. Boom did it. Boom Kids. It's limited to 500. I know that because it says it right on the front of the cover. Limited to 500. <laughs> so I was able to put that together. Um, and uh, I don't know. I love Kermit the Frog. I don't have this book. I would buy this book if I ever saw it um, for a reasonable price. Um, but uh, it made me laugh. So I, um, you know, I just put it on here to talk about. If anybody knows anything about this, has ever seen it, ever touched it, let me know. But so, um, <laughs> but you haven't found anything by way of sales for this thing. Yeah. 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 Like no, nothing, no, no sales, no eBay sales or anything like that. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't like dig. you know, you know, here's the funny thing, Carter. So if you go to the next slide, when I went back to research this book, I couldn't find anything on it, but I found oh this. Book. <laughs> um, which was also limited to 500. Um, and I couldn't just stand, I, when I went back and I, when I got that picture, I couldn't find like, where the hell did I pull this from? Um, but uh -huh. all I could find was this one, um, which is also came out in 2009, limited to 500 copies. So um, uh, I'm not sure what the, what the differences are. When you pull up this book, you can find this one um, as one of the variants listed, but um um, but the other one, the, the, the other one, I, I lost where, where, wherever I found it or even how I found it when I was looking at. And uh, so I wish I had more to sort of uh, say on these books. It's just uh, uh, just books that I thought were super funny, amazingly cool, a lot of nostalgia behind these. And yeah, I was curious if, if anybody on the show tonight knew anything about these. Um, I want to say because there, around the same time, Boom put out a, Incredibles and they have some limited to 500 um, variants. They're not foil, <laughs> but I want to say maybe they're mycomicshop.com variants, but I'm not positive. I'm looking on the eBay archive site, and uh, that particular cover sold in the 9.8 back in 2016 for 100 bucks. 2016 holy shit. I mean, wow. that's, that, that was the last one you could find the yeah last set. yep that's some deep digging though <laughs> i like i like as when you first pulled up the uh the other one i was like who would want this and then you're like i immediately want this <laughs> <laughs> you and then uh latasha in the chat she wants a set <laughs> you know what's surprising just the like even just the um just the regular covers. I mean, this came out in what um, ten years ago, well over ten years ago, oh. and just the regular covers are great covers. Yeah. And I remember coming across those uh, just a couple of weeks ago, actually. And they don't go for anything, and they're and they are terrific covers. Yeah, listen, I don't know if there's a huge embedded fan base for uh, for Muppets comics, um, but. Uh, um... Yeah, but they are. They're really they're really cool looking. And I think I like the the one before this one a little better than than this one. Um, um but uh, they're both really cool. I would grab them both if if I if I ever came across these mm -hmm. without Oh, for sure. All right, so here's a here here's a pricey um a pricey. This is a chromium, but uh, in the foil family. 
uh, Marvel collectible classic Spider-Man number 300. Um, and did some research on this. It, most people believe that this was limited to 3,500. Uh, so a relatively small print run, but this thing sells for a lot of money. Last 9-8 sale went for uh, 1670 uh, just recently. Um, in over 860 total on the census. The majority of those in 9-8, this holds up pretty well. Um, but a book that people pay a, a nice premium for. And um, the back of this is really cool, too. The back of this is like a Chrome version of uh, 301, ASM 301. Um, so really, a really beautiful book from Marvel. And, uh, and one that collectors really, really, uh, really chase and are willing to pay up for. So I always, I always think it's super funny that the, the official title for this is Marvel Collectible Classic Spider-Man number one. Yes. And then Marvel Collectible Classic Spider-Man number two is the Spider-Man one cover. <laughs> yes. I was going to put that one on here, too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Th that one was printed a, a hell of a lot more than this one. Um twice as much they they estimate mm -hmm. and uh that it looks beautiful in its own right and the back of the cover is uh, uh, spider-man Spider in the black 12. costume i right? think it's 12 or 13 13, Someone in yeah, the 13 i think yeah, yeah where he's where he's in the black costume so mm -hmm. really cool in its own right but um and then yeah, uh, you're right this is number this, this is number one technically i put 300 because it's it, yeah because it's 300 yeah. and, and then um fun fact about this it's embossed yeah it's really sharp when you see it in person yeah, anybody I have one on, on on the show tonight i mean these are i have i have number two so the okay. spider-man one but <laughs> no i cracked all right <laughs> <laughs> no i cracked one open for phil a couple of weeks ago and pressed it so it's we'll see how what it comes back it was a pgx so oh, yeah i remember when he bought that yeah to keep your fingers crossed we'll yeah. so what does that back. happen when you press something that's embossed like they're not really grading whether the, the embossing is still is still there i mean i know i mean how, how does that work joe when you press something like this does it it's kill like, the embossing or it's like a he's a trade secret of how he keeps it embossed. his lips are sealed <laughs> he pleads the fifth uh it, it's uh it's you don't want to take off the embossing, and you can if you use too much, uh, not too much, uh, too much pressure. So you have to, uh, like on a dry mount press, you have to adjust the, the pressure on 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 the press because you don't want to pop it out because it can be done. Damn, you can flatten the shit out of that book. Well, next time I have an embossed chromium cover, Joe, it's coming your way. Yeah, you. man. All right. Uh, uh, this is one of my favorite foils, a book I finally chased down. Shout out to um, to Ben Stein for this one. He's the one that opened my eyes to this book. Um, this book is so hard to find that it's hard to find pictures of it. It's one of those kinds of books. Um, uh, but, yeah, Ben Stein, um, who, uh, who does the CBSI, Hot 10, uh, check if you're not subscribed to his channel, check him out. Um, you know, every Friday night, hey, Richie, uh, Brian McClay, they, 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 they go through um, not only sort of the 10 hot comic books of the week, but also what they call the uh, the almost 10, which is my favorite part where they talk about just interesting sales. So oh, yeah. um, shout out to those guys. This House book, of Stein. Yeah, if you're yeah the House of Stein. <laughs> yes, the House of Stein. Don't uh, don't miss it. Um, this book is stunning. I think I've got one here somewhere. I wish I had it handy. I would show you. Um, I, it's just an absolutely beautiful book. Super hard to find out. To point out a couple of things with this book. One, um, um, there is there is a, a non-foil version that's limited to 2,500. So the I, had, I, I came across that uh, a little while ago. And ever since, I've been trying to find the foil for that and nothing yeah i can't find any history on how it was limited but it, it is super super tough to find um so i don't know what like how many there were made but but just given how how rare it is and how how infrequently it pops up um it, it, you can you can tell it's super rare um you know no real prices on this um but just an absolutely beautiful book hold on one second i might it's my copy here bear with me for one second is this worth showing if I have it? Oh yeah, here it is. All right. 
Let me figure it out. I found mine here. Oh, wow. Oh, look that's at that. That's so pretty. Yeah, just such a cool book. Like, like this is we all got our little personal ghosts that we chase. Sure. And uh, when I when I finally found this one, I was like, "God damn it, I'm not letting this thing go." So, <laughs> yeah, just uh, just a really cool book. That's nice, man. Oh yeah, Blind Adam, I forgot to mention that. Um, yeah, for the Marvel collectible classics, there are also the X Men keys as well that are uh, foiled in boss covers. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, we could have we could have we could have we could have talked about mm -hmm. countless books tonight. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's um, almost never ending. Hey, Aaron, I forgot before we finish before we end the show. We, I, think, I don't know how many harm we got, but are we going to give away the Gwenpool book tonight? Oh yeah, I forgot to make up. A... So, so what anybody I... commented yeah. last night, uh, sorry, um, in our um, uh, on the video um, last week, not in the chat, but on the video itself, was entered to win this. If you recall this is the gwenpool um number seven that was um limited to walmart and you can only tell that by looking in the barcode it's zero seven six one so uh this is a relatively hard book to find i call this the only gwenpool newsstand that was ever made of course, <laughs> this we're going to get since the newsstand was not going on when her books come out but uh but somebody's about to win this book so aaron are you going to do the honors on this one yeah, I think we still have a couple more books. Okay, um, you want to do it after? Yeah, so let me um, build the wheel, and then okay. I'll, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Well, if it's not ready to go, sorry, I just didn't want to forget about it. Yeah, I almost I forgot about that too. So thank you for the reminder. Whoa. All right, That's so another art germ. Uh, he's like the king of the foils tonight. Um, mm. Talk about a ghost. So, uh, um, and I and I have I think I have the price wrong on this. Uh, so, anyways, this is a Lady Death Nightmare Symphony Number no. One. It's an Archer on hollow foil. Uh, this book is beautiful. If you've ever seen it in person, I don't have one. I've never got near one. It was limited to seventy-seven. It says the last nine point eight seller was two seventy-five. I think that's supposed to be eight seventy-five, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there's the, the and I, I don't and this copies on the I, I think I didn't update the bottom part of these numbers here because I don't believe there's eighty-three of these on the census. This is I, I apologize. I did not update the data on, on on the bottom here there's only a handful of these on the census um but um um just a really uh stunning book and this is one of the you know you they sell prints of this now you know this is one of those images that everybody wants to get their hands on but can't because the book is really out of reach and rarely shows up and when it does it's it's for huge money um but um but one of our terms you know best looking um covers and it really really works in hollow foil if anybody's ever seen this one i think i've seen it like maybe once yeah i mean and then i think he went on to do other versions of it that aren't that don't pop quite as with the colors on these i think there's one that's a little bit more muted colors that was also quite limited he's kind of repurposed this because it was such a hit um but uh, but a super tough book to uh to get your hands on that's beautiful. I mean, I can only imagine in hollow foil, like mm -hmm. how gorgeous that looks. Yeah, I wish I had an example. I don't have it. <laughs> I would love to have <laughs> one, but I, but I do not have it. Um, let me take a quick look. I want to get the most recent price. I feel bad about the. Um, bear with me for once. I feel bad yeah. about the. The. Uh, I, I've I've never seen this before, um, but you know, art germ can tend to be a little bit, you know what should i say our germy you know <laughs> like you know no, he ran out of ideas he got super stale I, I, like, yeah totally. and, and this you know if you hadn't shown you know if i if i didn't see his sig you know below her elbow um i, I don't know that i would have guessed art germ so that's pretty cool yeah i mean art germ some of his early stuff is just absolutely amazing i think he's one of those artists who ended up getting um overworked and mm. um as a result just um you know, ended up cranking out a lot of stuff that looked like everything else he did. Right? I bet he's not too tired to pick up that paycheck, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I I'm mean, saying? He's, he's busy like running that art studio. Uh, so I'm not going to feel bad for him, like doing a lot of work. You know what I mean? No. Like if he's doing it for free, then then I would feel feel bad for him. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah, no, <laughs> I agree. I agree. I just saying that. You... <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> 
Was this only available graded? Because because uh, all I'm seeing are graded copies. Nothing loose. Nothing raw. I think I've only seen. It's a great. It's a great. Um, here we go. It, it's a great point, Carter. I think it might have been. Um, hold on, I'm going to drop something here. So it looks like the last 9.8 sale was for 750 bucks. When I can see. Really. Um, I bet it looks good in a slab. You know. Wow. Yeah. So he had. Th- so he had. Uh, there's a couple of other other versions of it as well. Um, but um, but yeah. I mean, this is. This is a book I've had my eye on for a very long time, and I don't think I'll ever get anywhere near it. I'm not going to drop a grand on this, but it's pretty damn cool. Mm-hmm. Hmm. There is a 9.9 on eBay for like $6,000. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you know, it's funny because it says there's one 9.9 on the census. Yeah, signed $6,499 if you just, if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> this one, six grand, it can be mine. <laughs> uh, all right. I believe this is the last book of the night. Um, this is a fairly sought after book, particularly by the Campbell, uh, this J. Scott Campbell collector. So this is the hollow FX, hollow foil, um, limited to a thousand. Um, there is a regular cover of this same art, um, just not not foil um and uh um you know this one can sell pretty hefty raw uh so the the 9.8 for 275 in february that we saw wasn't that bad of a deal to be honest um but uh yeah 83 on the census yeah so this is the 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 data that i had from the prior one was because i didn't update it from this one so apologies and uh 83 in the census 64 9.8 um a really cool vampirella um, you know, J. Scott Campbell has one of the more, more rabid uh, collector uh, fan bases out there, so this one gets gobbled up quite quickly. But uh, um, a cool looking book for sure. DeVoe featured this a raw sale of this on his Shaker show um, a little while ago. And when I was talking about books to talk about tonight, this is one that he's, he had suggested make sure we don't miss. And um, yeah, just uh, um, you know, a classic J. Scott Campbell cover. You don't have this one, do you, Carter? No, no, no. I don't think I've ever even come across this. That's beautiful. I, I love the hollow foil. I'm, well, I'm looking for it right now. <laughs> if, if Carter's never seen it, I assume it doesn't exist. <laughs> you know, um, uh, you can definitely tell that it's uh, early J. Scott Campbell because oh, yeah. it's just it feels it has like a it has it looks like it has weight to it as opposed to the uh, two dimensional style uh, that he has now. Very flat, rather. Yeah, I know, man. This is, uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is like when foil like really works on these kinds of covers, right? It, it just adds to it, make, it makes it really cool. It's beyond just a gimmick; like it really brings something to the to, to, to the actual cover. I, I like the stabby ventriloquist dummy in the background. That, <laughs> <laughs> I missed it on at first glance, and then I was like, "Oh, that's that kind of nice touch." I don't like um, for J. Scott Campbell. I'm not someone who's like his biggest fan because I tend to feel like some of like the women he draws like look very similar. But as I say that, I have like a like a, his signed like sketch for the True Blood I found. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, because nice. it's just so good in black and white in this. The six. How, how much you want for that? I not for sale. Claim, claim, <laughs> claim. Yeah, Campbell, I also feel at times was overworked. He was kind of doing the same cover over, like the same mm-hmm. female character in the same pose. Like he can absolutely kill it, but it feels like feels like some of these guys are doing so much they fall into little ruts every once in a while, and just kind of mm-hmm. produce the same the same look and feel over and over and over again. But uh, but this was definitely early on, and um, yeah, I, I think I think his collector base really this is a sought after one by them. Has anyone met J. Scott Campbell at, at a convention? No. Briefly, yeah. Okay, so at his booth, did you meet his wife as well? No. So if you ever meet her, she looks like every single 
<laughs> character that he's ever drawn. Yeah, like, like that's the no, joke that he draws his wife. But he's he's since been remarried. I don't know when the last time you saw him. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, he must marry the same person. <laughs> All, All right. right. Well, that, that 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 is it for tonight. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, um, yeah, we're gonna try to do these shows every week if we can. Just talking about interesting comic books. This isn't this isn't a spec show. We're just here talking about uh, cool books out there that you may not see every single day. And uh, if there's anything you want to see on the show, please let us know. We'll do our best to include it where we want to pull in the, the community into this. Um, but we really really appreciate everybody uh, spending some time with us. And uh, yeah, please leave a comment. Um, let us know what you think, and uh, we'll uh, we're already working on our next week's show. Yep. And uh, before we go, um, I want to thank Cover Price again, and then also I want to thank Bird City. Uh, so let me pull up this slide real quick. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So they are releasing this Friday uh, a Predator cover. Um, they they're gonna have their ratios are. They're, they're going to have ratio variants. They're selling a tra trade just for version, a virgin variant, and sets for $39.99. So make sure you are signed up for their text alerts so you don't miss their drops. And then what else do I have? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So for this wheel, all you had to do for Long Short's book was to comment on last week's video. Uh, so these were all the names that were on it by the time we started the show or during the show so i'm going to go ahead and spin it for the winner and i hope you're active for the chat so because i'm going to give away the other foil books too in just a second so it's like venom spawn all right venom spawn if you're watching please hit me up on instagram or leave a comment let me know how to get in touch with you and i'll, and I'll get it out um, i have a couple of other books i'm behind on sending out books so um, if, if you, uh, we did the bubblegum show, I, that it's still sitting on my desk <laughs> and I lost your IG. So I'm gonna have to go back and either rewatch the video and find out who it was, or please hit me up. <laughs> um, between the time we gave it away, I've been traveling to Europe. So please just, uh, remind me on that one. I'll get it out to you. All right. And then for my giveaway, it's going to look like the matrix for a second. <laughs> All right. So it says the draw names, right? Cause I'm on the. Right? It says draw. Yeah, draw. Yeah. Okay. Did it. All right. My God. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> so let's see who the winner is. Oh, I thought it was Chad there for a minute. Paul Holloway. Congrats. So hit me up on Instagram and I will be sending you this uh, Something is Killing the Children foil and the Bloodshot. And Paul Holloway, if you don't live in the continental United States, you are S O L. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Until All right. next time. Yeah. Thank you.